all this is dr mobin sayed from drbean.com welcome to one more show so i have one more rock star with us today her name is raylan agel and she runs a, a youtube channel plus she has a very decent good website as well for me cfs patients or chronic fatigue syndrome patients she has done tremendous help offered tremendous help and how i found out so i think it's it's fair relen before i ask you for your introduction i want to tell the story of how we found you so we have in the chat right now as well alexander alexander is a cool bean so our little tribe is called cool beans so alexander is a cool bean he's been uh, suffering with long covid for some time and not much help from various uh, interventions and one day alexander said after months and months and months and he said that i have really improved a lot i i believe he said 50% or more and so i became very curious and i said how did you become better and he he named your channel relin and he said i went there and i watched the videos and and since then i've improved a lot so first of all alexander thank you very much um he is uh this is alexander here he's just commenting and talking with others and i'm just pointing it out so not this specific comment but alexander thank you very much for your help for connecting us with relen so with this relen please tell us about yourself well first off thank you for that wonderful introduction and alexander i am so happy that you're finding some things that worked and i appreciate this connection as well so thank you very much so yeah this i mean this all started for me um i've had um you know chronic fatigue syndrome or me cfs uh, as it sometimes referred to which we know now is very similar if not exactly the same as many cases of long covid in my life for just about as long as i can remember and i grew up with a mother who was chronically unwell and she was diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome and lived with that um for you know that's all i can remember um of her uh, cuz she became sick when i was quite young and then when i was about 30 years old i became really unwell also and was eventually diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome and lived with that for about 10 years in varying degrees of severity before finally fully recovering and there was just so little out there in terms of information and help and support and i felt really lost and kind of on my own and like i had to figure this out myself and so much of what i was reading was telling me that recovery was impossible or that virtually nobody does and you just have to learn to live with it So when I did recover I didn't say that my apologies we still say that right medical yeah. community still says that hey this is something unknown and we still don't have good solutions Yes this is one of the biggest things um that I struggle with now because I do interview so many people on my channel and time after time after time they're telling me you know it could be 3 months ago 6 months ago they go to their doctor and their doctor is telling them um virtually no one gets better so you need to learn to live with this and it's just and it, it it doesn't need to be that way i've seen so many people talk to so many people interviewed so many people that are recovered i have recovered so um i just think it's a really important message to get out there excellent so thank you very much and um to give an idea to the audience for how important relens work is I want to show you some stats that I was looking at with Raylan before. So consider this that we have MECFS patients out there. We have new patients because of viral um infections that are developing new um MECFS like symptoms. And then check this out. In the COVID land, nearly 1 in 5 Americans adults who have had COVID-19 still have long COVID. So about 20% there are some reports of 7% there are some reports of even more than 20% but if you then look at the numbers in the us 104th million 445294 so 104 or 105 million covid cases and if you take 20% of that more than 20 million people are suffering with long covid if you look at worldwide Uh, Raylan and I was looking at these numbers before. Seven hundred and sixty-three million people got COVID. So, if you round it up for our ease of math, if we said eight hundred million cases, 
and then 20% of that, that is 160 million people with long COVID. This is on top of, Raylan, as you were saying, this is on top of uh, existing people with MECFS and the other viral infections. So before we continue, I would just want to very quickly show people your site, where to find you. So Alexander, you are here. I am putting words in your mouth, please tell me if I'm correct or not. But you said that you recovered a lot after being here, watching various videos and seeing the, the, the processes and mechanics and, and guidance here. So this is Raylan's website. I would request that please subscribe here. And then if you know someone who is long COVID, and I think we almost everyone knows someone, send this to them. There is a lot of help here. Then this is Raylan's website, raylanagle.com. And so please feel free to um, visit here. Raylan, I believe you have a book here as well. I do, yes. Once I finally recovered, uh, that is how I started this whole journey. So I published a book called Finding Freedom. Just uh, kind of, it's in two parts. The first part is a memoir uh, telling my journey of living, becoming chronically ill, what that was like. Really heavy topic, but trying to also keep it light and kind of learning to laugh at the whole experience. And then the second part walks you through what I did to, to fully recover. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So thank you very much. I'm so, so happy that you're here. So let's start the discussion of MECFS. So from a patient's point of view, so your mother had it, uh, you have it or, or have recovered now. What is MECFS? Ah, very good question. It is a chronic health condition that people are diagnosed with once they have been tested for virtually everything else and it has come back negative. And you have a cluster of symptoms that fit the diagnostic criteria. Um, a big one is post-exertional malaise. So any kind of mental or physical exertion makes you feel worse. Chronic fatigue that is not refreshed by sleep. Sleep um, disorders, um, cognitive symptoms, often called brain fog, can be digestive issues, um, chronic pain issues. Um, so it's it doesn't look exactly the same for everybody, but that's sort of the essence uh, of what it looks like. Got it. And if I wanted to describe to people, so I'm a medical doctor. I'm going to say mm -hmm. that in medicine, we usually say that this is a situation which we do not have a lot of information about. It's idiopathic, meaning we do not really know the pathologies. And because of that, it actually can continue without us being able to do much other than painkillers and anti-inflammatories and so on. So tell me from you, so you said you recovered and you interview a lot of people who recovered. So from your perspective, how should we look at it? Recoverable or not recoverable? Absolutely recoverable. I've interviewed, and not just interviewed, but people email me and DM me, and I have you know, a Facebook group with thousands of people in it, so I'm talking to people all of the time, and people recover in all sorts of cases where they are so severe and you think there's no coming back from that, or they've been sick for decades and you just think like, this is, this is going to be it. But it just in all sorts of scenarios, no matter what set it off, no matter what their specific symptoms look like, no matter what their level of severity, people all over the world are fully coming back from this. So I think that it is, yes, absolutely 100% recoverable. So this is a very important message because what I see, and you have been exposing yourself to more of these patients and working with them more, um, I see a lot of disappointment and discouragement, especially when the doctor also says that, hey, we can't do much and then give a traditional set of things. So tell me this, what is this journey of recovery? How did you recover and how do people who join you on your channel and discuss, what is the core of this? It's interesting because my understanding of recovery has changed or of my own recovery as time has gone, gone on. And the more people I talk to, the more experts in the field, the more people who have also recovered, I, I understand my journey a little bit differently because my journey was very much about supporting my body's own ability to heal doing things to help it to thrive. One of the things that helped me a lot was a very gradual, um, slowly increasing exercise program. I started with one minute of just gentle movement a day or every second day. And then every week I'd add on another minute. 
And I thought at the time it was a sort of reconditioning my body. But looking back, I think my body was actually fine. It had the ability to do more exercise. It was a matter of changing the way my brain, the neurons, um, that brain body connection um, was responding to movement because I just had years of being conditioned and create those pathways in my brain of movement, danger, exercise, bad. So I had to slowly start reintroducing things into my life and show my, my, my brain, my nervous system that it was okay and it was safe and that I could do them, which is that a lot is, of what I'm seeing. That is fascinating. So uh, we study in psychology. Uh, what is that? Uh, I forgot the fish's name, but there is a fish that is a bottom dweller fish. And what they did was in an experiment, it's a very aggressive fish. So they, in an experiment, they put the fish in a tank and then put the fish there and put another lid on it, another uh, container on it and put the small fish that, that it eats around it. And then the fish becomes hungry and it tries to eat those little fish that are, that are cir circling outside. And this fish continues to hit the glass and becomes injured. Eventually it just sits down on the floor and then they remove this container from the fish. And now the little food fish are there, but this fish never gets up and eats them because it has made this mental barrier that I cannot eat these fish. And it actually dies on the floor, but does not try. So it's very interesting that you're saying that one important aspect is to actually retrain your own mindset. Mm -hmm. So then tell me this, how do you do that? <laughs> it seems to look different for different people. I mean, there's a lot of programs out there that exist now, commonly referred to as brain training programs, and they have different strategies for you to do. A lot of it is centered around changing your response to your symptoms because there's so much fear around symptoms because they can be so scary and so debilitating. I mean, it can feel, some people think that they're dying, um, but in reality, what it looks like, at least for a lot of people, is that those symptoms aren't hurting you and there isn't, isn't actually anything physically wrong with you. It's about looking at the nervous system, looking at the brain and you know, changing those pathways. So for some people, it's like the, the exercise that I did. Some people, they call it gradual re-exposure therapy. So slowly, slowly re-exposing themselves to more in life and showing themselves that they can do it. There's a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of work out there like Dr. John Sarno, a lot of people that talk about the mind-body connection. And a big piece of it seems to be for people just understanding that for a lot of us, these symptoms that we're feeling are neurological in origin. You know, not that it's all in our head. And I know that people can be sensitive to these sorts of um statements, but that our brain is a very powerful organ and um, working with our brain and working with our nervous system, whether it be through these brain training programs, through gradual exposure or, um, you know, gradient exercise therapy, which can be dangerous if done wrong, but it has been helpful for a lot of people. Or also some people even just tell me it's through a process of self-compassion because Virtually everyone that I interview before they got sick was some sort of type A overachiever perfectionist that drove themselves so hard and had such high levels of stress and were so incredibly hard on themselves. So a big component of it for a lot of people is actually, it's not easy, but doable, looking to change your personality and how you approach yourself and your life and the messages that you tell yourself and the compassion that you have for yourself. And I know how this all kind of sounds. And when I first got sick, if someone had said this to me, I, I think I would have just completely dismissed it. Um, but I just I hear it time and time and time again. Um, it's just, it's so in my face, it's impossible to ignore. Got it. And I actually believe in mindfulness and I believe in the healing from there. This is a very different process than when we get labeled as it's in your head and go fix mm -hmm. that. That's a very different, although... Um, the target is the same, but that is a very different, that's a dismissive way and to ignore someone, this is a way to actually heal someone. I wanna show you a comment, a cool being just posted. And this is the kind of, I think, comments which, and the folks who can get this help as well. So Broken Forever 
says, I've tried slow exercises for past year and a half, still haven't been able to progress into anything more without feeling like crap. Lol, glad it's working for some. I wish I could ride a bike again. So do you see the, I wish I could ride a bike again? Mm -hmm. And so have you uh, seen patients with long-term um, issues and then recovering? Yes, absolutely. And it, I mean, there are interviews on my channel, multiple ones of people that were sick for decades and then they fully recovered. And, you know, and in the beginning, when I first started interviewing people, it was a bit confusing because the recovery stories felt like they were a bit all over the place. Like what was working for people seemed so radically different until I started to see the themes of you know the the neurological component and the nervous system component so it's what people feel safe with and they have some control over so for me i had a strong belief in exercise i was a big exerciser before i got sick and i had heard a story of someone who got better using the sort of gradual exercise thing so for me it felt like a safe thing i was comfortable with it it didn't scare me other people it's through changing their diet finding something that they feel good about it's I think it's why we see sort of different things on the surface working for different people. But the core theme of all of it is that, um, you know, working with your brain, working with your nervous system, getting rid of the stress, giving yourself messages of safety um, and getting yourself into a, a healing state so that your body can recover. Good. Fair enough. So tell me this then. How do people find this help? Where do we? So there are certain themes in this, and yeah. that means there may be multiple possibilities of uh, approaching this problem, um, this disease. How do people figure out solutions? Where do they go? That's a really good question. I mean, I think the, the good place, the best place to start is always with your doctor and going through conventional medicine and getting all the tests and making sure that there isn't anything you know, physically wrong with you. But of the people that I talk to that recover, virtually every single one of them, I can only think of one person who recovered going through the conventional medical system. And he was actually working with a doctor using unconventional methods. But everyone else is doing it through things like health coaches, people who have also been um, severely unwell with the same condition that you're going through and have recovered and have since gone on to help people. People, There are lots of people who have recovered who have created their own programs. There's a bunch of different um, brain training and nervous system and all sorts of different you know, holistic recovery programs. And I get it can be a bit overwhelming and it's hard to know what you can trust, um, but there is tremendous value in the lived experiences of people who have figured out how to get past it. And now when they go on to work with other people, um, you know, they continue to learn through the people that they're supporting, you know, how to best tweak and rework this. So I think just being really open minded to all sorts of treatment options uh, can go a really long way. Got it. Thank you very much. So before I ask this question that John is asking, I still want to um, follow up on this uh, statement, uh, your message. So imagine if I have the MECFS mm -hmm. or long COVID and uh, I'm open minded. I want to go figure it out. Yeah. Where do I find resources? Do I go to a Facebook group? Do I go to your site? Do I go to your channel? Do How do I reach someone who can help? Well, the best thing that I have to offer is through my YouTube channel, because there are lots of interviews with experts out there, people who run programs, authors, researchers, people that have recovered. So you can get information there. But then I also have on my website a resources section that links you to a list of health coaches. They are all people who have gone through this themselves and now go on to support other people. So I think the best place to start is to look at those interviews and see what programs are out there and see what resonates for you. Cause people, you know, will hear one and that doesn't feel like a good fit. And then something else like, yes, that really fits with my experience. So it's a little bit of research. It's a little bit of digging around, but the information is, is out there for sure. So I think that <clears throat> for the audience, my thought will be to start with Raylan's uh, website and her channel and i guess you would see from there the pathways to follow and see so Raylan, thank you very much for putting these together i have a question for you 
and this is uh, john who is also a cool bean we are all cool beans over here and we are actually <laughs> technically medically technically very uh, deep as well and i have to uh, share this that as much as medical community has not been able to help for example look at the nih trying to offer exercise trials for long covid yeah. which was just so insensitive um, a lot of people here a lot of cool beans who have been coming here looking at various studies and interventions have felt better so john says and some have not john says if this is okay to ask has reeland worked with anyone post vaccine trying to say delicately so uh, there has been just one study from nih where this is still a preprint in which they had i think 21 patients of uh, vaccine injury with the neurological outcomes so as rare as, as these may be there are vaccine injured individuals have you seen such cases and have you seen them recovering have they connected with you it's interesting cuz and it's something that i'll admit that i am not have not historically and am not currently giving enough attention to and even a part of my own journey you know i say i got the flu and then i never really recovered but i got the flu and i actually did feel better for about a week and i went back to work and they were giving out vaccinations and i got a vaccine and then that night i was sick again and from there i continued to be unwell so was that a part of it was it not um hmm. but it is definitely worth mentioning so how did you recover from there same processes yeah well i mean for me it was i did a bunch of different things i was trying to support my immune system i was um working with things like um you know supporting my lymphatic system with cold showers i was doing the gradual exercise and exercise i mean it was it'd be better to be called movement because exercise can be really dangerous as i'm sure i don't have to tell people watching for people who are facing these conditions because if you do too much you can really set yourself back um but it was just doing a lot of the things that we don't give enough credit for it was working on my mindset it was working on stress it was going to therapy it was journaling and meditation it was you know i did a lot of work healing my gut that helped me overall health wise did that was that a part of my cfs recovery now i'm not fully sure but it i was just looking at every aspect of my body you know getting that early morning sunlight um keeping my stress levels down having you know love and connection in my life a lot of the things that i used to take for granted and just trying to get myself into a really good state and then slowly building up my activity over time and that's what eventually got me there got it and uh for the audience once more stress or early morning light as you said these are actually studies that show the benefit of these for example early morning sun evening sun i discussed those papers a few few months ago i guess or few weeks ago where we discussed that near infrared light is 30% more during the morning and evening and that has a very healing effect on mitochondrial abnormalities which can lead to mecfs like symptoms and similarly stress hormones when these are released they actually cause a lot of damage to the body and they block a lot of recovery that we can make so these are very important even medically proven things i think they putting that theme together to say here is the process to go through the journey so raylan tell me this what have you seen most patients recovering with what is the Uh, so i'm sure that there are many kinds of interventions what is the most common one the most common one that i see so what i'm seeing and this is just my perspective of you know this is anecdotal it is you know from talking to people people sharing their stories but i've you know made my own observations so just want to put it out there for what it is you know i am not a medical professional um, but i do think there is value in listening to these stories and seeing what people are saying who are fully getting past this and what i notice that there's generally three buckets of things that people address who recover and the first one is very much that nervous system component people uh 
all day long I'm hearing about this, talking about understanding, you know, the your nervous system, the role of the parasympathetic nervous system and the, and the sympathetic nervous system and being in fight or flight. Because most people, when they get sick, it's a very traumatic experience and they become in this chronically stressed state. And as most of us are coming to understand that this is not a state in which our body focuses on healing and thriving long term, it's focusing on short term survival. You know, fighting off that bear or whatever it thinks the threat is. So virtually everyone I talk to has had to do something to deal with the stress in their life, whether it's, and sometimes it's things that they've been carrying around, past trauma. Most people I talk to say they recognize that when they got sick, there was a lot of stress leading up to it and the light bulbs start to go off that maybe that had something to do with it. So it's dealing with whatever that is in their life. And then the second piece of it, that second bucket is... I mean, what I'll loosely refer to as brain training, but that can mean a lot of different things. You know, just looking at those, you know, those, those neural pathways in the brain and making those new connections and teaching yourself that life is safe and that you are physically okay um, so you can get past it. And then the third bucket is some people, but not everyone needs to address, is looking at those you know, the, the physical things that are happening in your body. Some people have mold exposure or, you know, a heavy metal toxicity or maybe gut health problems or underlying infections. And those things, of course, are all real. And if they're there, they need to be addressed. But many of the people who recover tried addressing those things and it didn't help. Or they didn't have any of that going on. And all they needed to do was address their neurological and the nerv nervous system aspect and they were able to recover fully. So it's a combination of those things that kind of seem to work synergistically um, when people uh, address the areas that that apply to them. Got it. Thank you very much. And so um, before we talk about what are the dif difficulties in this process, I want to show you this uh, question from Zizi Berman. They say, Raylan, are you now able to exercise as you did pre-CFS? <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Uh, it took me about a year to build up with my program where I was doing one minute a day, then two minutes a day. And I eventually got up to about hour long workouts. And this was a few years ago now. But now I work out, I have a personal trainer, I work out five days a week, I run, I play tennis, I can push myself as hard as I want at the gym, and I get no um, post exertional malaise, no symptom flares, no anything. And this is on top of essentially working two jobs because I work full time um, at, at a company that has nothing to do with any of this. And then I do all of this sort of on the side. I have a very busy life. I put in a lot of hours. <laughs> I'm socially active and I can still push myself really hard physically as well. So, yeah, I'm absolutely um, back to I'm actually in better shape now than I was before I got sick, which is amazing. Excellent. Yeah, that is amazing. <laughs> that is amazing. Thank you very much for going on that journey. And then thank you very much for sharing it with others. So Danger Zone says, how do you maintain muscle if you don't exercise? So this is when you started or you were not doing exercises. So then how do you maintain yeah. muscle if you? Yeah, I, I, when I was sick, I lost a lot of muscle. And as someone who was an avid exerciser before I got sick, before I got sick, I was running 10 kilometers almost every morning before I went to work. And then I'd still go to the gym in the evening. And I'd sometimes work out up to three hours at a time. I was an over-exerciser. So when I got sick, it was a stressful thing for me. And I just really watched a lot of, almost all of my muscle just kind of disappear because I was inactive for so many years. Um, but, you know, I was able to slowly build back up and, um, yeah, get back. Excellent. Excellent. So you are really an inspiration for us over here because there are many of us in our tribe who are suffering from long COVID and or, and or vaccine injury. Uh, so Diversity Love says, thanks for inspiring me to try again. Uh, Broken Forever says, are these exercises that have been discussed that seem to show most improvement or just any exercise? I've tried HIIT training. For me, the absolute most important thing where I finally got successful with it was to go so little and so light that it felt like it couldn't possibly be doing any benefit at all. I mean, I, I started with one minute a day and that was with no weights, nothing, no high intensity, it was just some sort of like gentle squats or moving my arms around. It was 
I, I failed with exercise for many years while I was sick trying to get better because I couldn't think small enough. I'd think I'll just do five minutes and then it would lay me out and I would have a crash or a symptom flare and that post-exertional malaise would come on. So for me, it was just starting so incredibly small and then building up so, so slowly um, and kind of learning that it was safe and teaching my body that it was safe. So that's what was key for me. Excellent, thank you very much. I have one more question which is important. And Margaret McInnes is here. I think she made a comment that she has been suffering for 30 years. So my question to you, have you seen uh, or have people contacted you who had been suffering with Lyme, chronic Lyme, and then they treated that as well, like an MECFS recovery journey, as you're saying, and became better? Yes, uh, absolutely. I have interviewed people that were diagnosed with chronic Lyme disease and fully recovered. I was actually diagnosed with chronic Lyme disease as well in the first couple of years of my illness. Um, and I did, you know, heavy doses of antibiotics and all the usual treatments. It didn't show me uh, much improvement or relief from my symptoms. So I'm not sure how much that factored into my big picture, but I have definitely talked to people who have had chronic Lyme, interviewed people who did fully recover. Yes thankfully. That is, that's great to know. Thank you very much. So uh, what I have seen long COVID patients, as they start recovering, they jump at the exercise and they just want to do a lot of it just to prove, I believe, to themselves yeah. to say that I'm, I'm okay. And then they relapse. So what are the obstacles? What are the difficulties in the recovery's journey? Even when we know that here is a path, what are the issues to be aware of? I think a big one is that, you know, how I talked about, a lot of us are noticing that those of us that end up in the chronic place of, you know, post-viral syndromes, MECFS, long COVID, had really hectic lifestyles leading up to this and were very type A personalities and very driven. And I faced this myself as well, that once you start to get your energy back and you start to feel like you're getting your life back, you just want to jump back into everything. And there's a lot of old habits there that once I recovered, I thought, okay, I'll never do that to myself again. I'll take better care of myself. But it's just until you teach yourself a different way of doing things, it's very easy to jump back in and overdo it. And to realize that even once you're getting healthier, you're still human and you still have limits. And there's something that's talked about a lot in long COVID and MECFS recovering. I imagine you've heard about it, but it's the concept of pacing and being aware of how much energy you have, how much you're using and not going over and above that. And I think a lot of us think that once we start to get more recovered, that that goes out the window and we don't need it anymore. But it's something that we need even when we're healthy because we all have limits. So if you try to suddenly put in something big into your life that wasn't there last week, whether it be going back to work part-time or exercising vigorously, you know, it's, 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 um, you're going to push your limits. You have to make that space and make sure you are physically and mentally, uh, you know, ready and have the energy to do it. And a part of this also, because once we are working on our recovery, this sort of type A perfectionist personality can work against us because that same person is driving our recovery bus. So things, you know, <laughs> we can kind of turn things that should be healthy into things that are toxic just because we have such a rigid approach. So whether it be pacing, some people have said that pacing makes them worse because they had such regimented like minute by minute schedules that they expected themselves to follow. And if they went over it, they were really hard on themselves. And then they started to panic and thought it was going to make them worse. It can be this with food where you just start to stress over every bite of food you put in your mouth and have really strict um, you know, expectations of yourself that you can never fully meet. So, of course, eating well is typically always a good thing. But if it becomes a massive source of stress, then it's going to start to work against you. So that's one of the obstacles is changing your mindset and changing your personality uh, enough that you're coming at this in a different way and have self-compassion while you're doing it. So that person that's that voice in your head that's been yelling at you probably most of your life um, needs to start being kind to you and having a more flexible approach to your recovery. Excellent. I think this is a very important message because, um, so I have a, an example of a young woman, 23 years old, uh, had vaccine, she was fine, then got COVID, 
she was fine and then she decided to have a booster and somehow she became ill when she became ill she uh, somehow reached out to me i guided her to some of the protocols she spoke with the doctor became better and then when she became better she went from the us so she is in us she went from the us to canada with friends and had a lot of good time over there and she came back she came back and she was in relapse so when i spoke with her i said why did you exert so much and she said because i wanted to feel normal i wanted to make sure that i'm i'm okay and i had recovered so much that i thought it should be okay and she had to spend another 2 3 months to recover and then she did recover and now she says that she has found out what things can trigger her or relapse her mm-hmm. and then how to approach them or if she feels that a relapse is coming how to quickly take a break and de-stress herself and try to figure it out i have a question we say this very often to de-stress yourself or relax how do people relax are there <laughs> I mean this this seems so insensitive to to yeah. look at someone who is suffering to say well relax how do they relax yeah that's a really good point and just to have this idea like okay i'm going to be more relaxed or i'm going to be less stressed it's not going to happen i mean you need to have a plan and concrete strategies and tools so it's different for different people but you know it's i for me it's a combination and a lot of people that i talk to of some small things that we use you know kind of moment to moment throughout the day and then some bigger things um that happen more periodically so for a lot of people it's meditation having a regular serious meditation practice can go a long way to managing your stress levels for a lot of people it's a daily journaling practice where they are just you know processing their thoughts dealing with past traumas unpacking things you know could be therapy um it could be all sorts of things you know one thing that i do is i have a question that i ask myself as many times a day as i possibly can and i have reminders all over i have on my laptop i have screen saver a uh, uh, screen saver on my phone and the question is what does self care look like for me right now because i've realized that i need to have a more proactive approach where throughout my day i'm catching things before they sort of build up and become big. So it's just pausing, taking a breath, and in the moment I'm in thinking what do I really need right now? Am I exhausted? Am I stressed? Am I thirsty? Do I need a break? Do I need some quiet? Um, you know, do I whatever it might be. So some combination of those little things that get you throughout the day along with some some bigger scheduled um, you know, more concrete things. I think um really can do a lot. excellent thank you so much uh, diversity love is making a comment she says i want to quit work so i can heal and hopefully make money by promoting diversity and happiness absolutely and good luck to you diversity for that so um thank you so much for your uh, insights and even more than that what i wanted was um uh, for cool beans to know who you are and to know your work and to be able to find help through that work as well so thank you for coming in any message that you would like to give to long covid or vaccine injury or mecfs or lyme or any other chronic fatigue uh, syndrome patients what would the, be your message the the biggest message that i would have for those of you watching if you're currently facing a condition like this and i'm so grateful to you for you know having me on your channel and promoting my space and the stories that I'm sharing is that I I know it can feel very dire and it can feel like things are never going to change and it can feel very hopeless and there are some concrete things out there to you can justify like yeah this is never going to get better doctors or whoever are telling me that I just need to live with it but there are so many people that are recovering and so many different things out there that are working for people that I just really encourage you to not give up and I know it can be hard to keep picking yourself back up again and again and sometimes it just feels like you keep going back to square one but you're never at square one cuz you're always learning you have more information you have more tools than you did the last time and so many people I've interviewed 
were sick for so long and then they found something and it just you know clicked and they were really quite quickly 100% better and living these full amazing active lives beyond their wildest dreams it happened to me as well if someone had told me all that was waiting for me after my illness i never would have believed them so my message is just to hang in there keep doing what you're doing give yourself a hug you're trying as hard as you can good for you for watching videos like this one um, and just keep at it and i believe you've got this and you'll figure out what you need as well Thank you so much. This is such a wonderful discussion, uh, insights. So I have been talking about various medical interventions, but what you are connecting here with mindfulness and working with your body and then slowly building back up and becoming normal and recovering fully, that is amazing. And once again, I would give an example, I think with permission of Alexander Kotter or Kocher, that he, he was not able to find much solutions that we were presenting. And then one day he said, I'm much better. And it was your work and listening to your channel. So thank you very much for being here. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your inspiration. And Cool Beans, thank you very much for joining. Please like, subscribe, and share. Share this with someone who may be uh, suffering with long COVID or chronic fatigue syndromes. And if not, then at least tell Raylan's name to others or her uh, her uh, YouTube channel to others. So with this, thank you very much. I would see you tomorrow with Paul Borg about COVID stats. Raylan, once again, thank you very much for being here. Thank you so much. It's absolutely my honor and my pleasure. And much love to all you cool beans out there. I'm excited to have connected with you. You have become a cool bean just by connecting with us. Yay! <laughs> Amazing. Bye-bye for now. Bye.